Hey there! Thank you for being here and if it's because of my South Korea teaser video that brought you here, thank you for checking out both videos. So this vlog is about my trip to South Korea which I hope can help you plan on your next trip there. Okay, first thing to consider before getting on that plane are your travel documents. Please ensure that your passport is at least 6 months valid from your date of arrival. And, depending on your nationality, an entry visa may be required. As for me, I'm a Philippine passport holder. I applied for it prior to my departure. We arrived at Incheon Airport 30 minutes past 7 o'clock in the evening. At the airport, we already had our Philippine peso and US dollars exchanged to Korean won. And since I know that in some days, I'll be going around the city alone, I secured a mobile data connection to help me find my way around and have access to my best buddy Google and some very useful Korean apps. From the airport, there are several ways to go to the city. You can either take a taxi, you can also take the train, but our best option this time was to take the airport limousine, which cost about 40,000 Korean won. That took us direct to Myeongdong, where our hostel is. We are here in Myeongdong, which is one of the shopping districts here in Seoul and also one of the best places to try Korea street food. Star. Hi. What are you Hello. eating? This is kimbap. What's a kimbap? It's rice covered well, wrapped in seaweed. And then this is banana milk. I'm going to try this uh, tek tekboki or tekboki. Sorry if I pronounce it wrong. So basically, this one is a um, stir fried rice cake, and I think um, the sauce is quite spicy. Although I'm not very good with spicy food, sana okay siya. So bukan natin. It's really good. It's like those um. What we call bilo bilo, so sticky rice. Yeah. Aron sarap. The next one is this uh, dumpling, but this one is uh, what they call Myeongdong dumpling. I'm not sure if there's any difference with the other dumplings here in Seoul, but since we're staying in Myeongdong, so I'm trying out this Myeongdong dumpling. It's really really nice. Medyo crispy yung labas niya. Then, by the way, this one is pork. Then, simple comparison ko, para siyang gyoza. They call a soju. Basically, it's rice wine that is best food with Korean wine. Once again. Next on our trip is a walk back in time to know more about Korea's history and culture. I am now here at Gyeongbokgung Palace which is the first and largest among the five grand palaces here in Seoul. For most visitors, wearing the handbook while going around here in other palaces made them feel the Korean heritage even more. Plus, the entrance fees are way. A visit at the palace wouldn't be complete without witnessing the changing of the guard. Next grand palace that we visited is the Changbyokgong Palace, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site.
Jogiesa Temple is the main temple in the Jogye order in Seoul, and it is also the center of Korean Buddhism. Just a couple of meters from the Seoul City Hall is the Namdaemun Gate, which is Korea's number one national treasure. Just beside the Namdaemun Gate is the Namdaemun Market, where you can find the best bargains for wholesale and retail. Koreans made it sure that taking the metro would be fun. At the Seoul City Hall station, you can play with your feet at this piano staircase. I'm not sure what I was doing here. Well, I can't even play the piano using my fingers. And it's even harder for me to play using my feet. From the historic South Korea, we now move on to the modern, chic, and trendy side of Seoul. We are now at the Dongdaemun Design Plaza. I like the futuristic building design and modern art around it. Plus, this is where the most coolest event in Korea is being held. Lucky for me, it was the opening of the Seoul Fashion Week and I got to get a glimpse of Korea's superstars. After seeing the superstars, let's try to reach now for the real stars by going up the Namsan Seoul Tower. The top of the tower is about 480 meters high and I believe this is one of the preferred places for couples to go on a date and their best choice to make a marriage proposal. This bittersweet heat is suffocating I'm waiting and always hesitating Kryptonite desires set my heart afire Heart on fire Set my heart afire So I'm going to Nami Island today while my friends are going on this Korean drama studio tour. Um, here from Myeongdong, where I'm staying, that's about two hours. So I'll be taking the train, then there will be two transfers. With a final train stop at Gapyong Station. We're already at the Gapyong Station. So from here, you can either take a taxi or a bus going to the ferry station, going to Nami Island. Regarding General Nami. Good morning. So we are going on this uh, BMZ JSA tour. So basically right now we're on the tires border in North and South Korea. Which is one of the most heavily guarded borders in the world. Also, going here can only be done by joining a tour from one of its accredited tour operators. Right, so anyway, I'm very happy to be your tour guide today. My name is Laura. Laura? Laura is my name. Hey, <laughs> the tour starts with a visit at the War Memorial of Korea that houses about 33,000 war artifacts and serves as an educational venue about the history of the Korean War. 
along the river, that runs along this road. So when the river up and down, up and down, this wire fence runs together with the river. Next stop in our tour is the Injingak Resort, which is just about 7 kilometers from the military demarcation line. I was also fascinated to see a theme park within the area. At the resort is the Unification Park, Gyeonggui Train Line, which was destroyed during the 1950 war, an observatory and the Freedom Bridge where South Korean crossed from North Korea after the armistice agreement was signed. Now it's time for the main event of our tour to Camp Boniface for the JSA visit and step foot at North Korea. But before that, we had a 20-minute briefing about the DMZ and JSA plus more do's and don'ts when we reach JSA. And after that, we were asked to sign a declaration form which made me a bit more nervous about the tour. Welcome to Conference World, the official meeting place between uh, North and South Korea. All the blue bills belong to UNC or United Nations Command, while the uh, silver or gray bills belong to KPA. So to your immediate right, you will see a blue building, the JDO. It's currently a joint duty officer and it's a U.S. Naval officer who serves as the official representative of the Military Armistice Commission. And he conducts official communications between the North and South. So starting from your right, it's our North Korea's recreational facility. It is named this rather ironically as it houses no recreational equipment and it's seldom used by the North Koreans. When they do use this building, that's when we have any types of talks between high ranking individuals in which they stage to 10 to 20 armed soldiers inside. Next is the T3, which is JDL for colonel level and staff officer level talk. T2, which is the MAC building, the Military Armistice Commission. The T1 is the NDC camp and it's used for bi, uh, bi weekly meetings. So to your far left, you will see a silver building. This is uh, the former Czech and the Polish uh, neutral nations camp, but it's no longer being used. So behind me, you can see the Pamon Gong, uh, North Korea's welcoming center. It also serves as a two-man guard post. And at this time, you can see a North Korean guard. We call it Bob. You can see Bob's in and out of the pillow for 12 hours a day. And he switches out with the other Bobs in the building. And also, uh, you may continue p taking pictures of Bob, but do not take any pictures of the weather tower or the blue building, JDO, or across from the KPA Garbage Room 2. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. 